Look over and greet your neighbor. Tell them welcome to the house of God. Got something good for you today. God got something good for you today. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Was that an amazing job to get us into the presence of God? Thank you all. We love you. Woo! That's right. Bob's class, you're dismissed. Thank you to all who put together the um, and worked so hard on the on the uh, Thanksgiving feast. I heard a lot of good reports from that, and then as well, uh, deliveries and different things going on, and then we had a funeral following up after that, and had folks working and sharing and, and putting things together there, so thank you all for doing everything. Now look over at your neighbor and tell them Merry Christmas. <laughs> How you all know, it happens about every three months, is what Mr. Jimmy was sharing when we were here a while back, you know, so we are going to get into a subject that is... Um, Fairly, I would say, as far as scriptural terms and things like that, somewhat mysterious, but it's really not when you go to studying the things of God. Um, we've been talking about, and we've been in this series, in Romans chapter 8, verse 2, if we could get that up, Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. We've been talking about the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And so in this law, everybody say the law. It is in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And this law in the spirit of life, it's made me free. It, it, it did something for me. It set me free from the laws of sin and death. So there are two primary laws that are at work right here. How many of y'all know that God has one plan, one only? Amen. We talked about it last week. How many of y'all know God has a plan for the world and it's called the church? Everybody say the church. Yes, Amen. He has one plan for the church. Amen. He has one plan for us as well. And uh, one plan for America, and that is the church. And so we want to push in, and he has one plan for each of us as members of the church. Everybody look over at your neighbor and tell them, you are the church. Amen. You are. That's who it is. You're the church. Man, it's not the building. That's right. Jesus didn't shed his blood for the building. Amen. It's for this building, for the church, for the believer. He shed his blood for us. And, and we have one plan, he has one plan for us, and that is him, his blood, uh, the name of Jesus, the power of Jesus. So last week, we started on this message, and, and, uh, and so we're preaching the second part of this message about the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that just in a moment. We'll get there in Ephesians chapter 1. I want to recap just a little bit. So let's look at John chapter 16 and 13. And we're talking about this spirit. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made. You're not trying to get me free. He's already got there. I just need to learn how to walk into that freedom. How many of all... Now, today specifically, I'm just going to tell you where we're going to. We're talking about dreams and visions and revelations and how God can reveal. And we've talked about... How many of all remember the story? He used a burning bush. He used a donkey, right? He used a star, Right, we're we're going into the Christmas season, and 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 so whenever you start as a pastor, when you start teaching about how long has it been since you heard a message taught just about spiritual dreams? Been a while. You don't hear it much because pastors are afraid to go into that area. It's like people give you the stink eye when you start talking about that kind of stuff because you know he may just be flaking out on us. Bless his heart. He's been doing this a long time. You know he's he's had a few concussions along the line, and bless his heart. Right. How many of y'all know that we don't just relegate dreams and visions to the Old Testament? Nobody struggles with thinking about Daniels and Ezekiels and Isaiahs and Jeremiahs and those guys, right? We, we know that they had dreams. What about this kid named Joseph? He's 17 years old and he has, what a weird dream. He sees these sheaves bowing down to him, Right? Weird stuff like that, right? How I many all know that a picture speaks a thousand words? Amen. And so when God begins to speak and to use those things, God is the greatest communicator that's ever been. And so I want to just take you on a little bit of a scriptural journey for just a little bit, so that let me let, let's kind of pull the audience as we get ready. How many of all have ever had a dream? Right? Now I'm not talking about a spiritual dream. I just had a dream. Amen. I had one about Hershey's candy bars once. <laughs> How many of y'all like Hershey's candy bars? Preach! Look at here. Look at that! Woo! I knew I could get your attention one way or the other. So this is a fat kid dream, man. It's a true, true, true story. 
Now listen, now don't, now I gotta tell the dream just so you know. Not every dream's from God, right? And, and I can show you a ton of places in Scripture where, uh, where like Zechariah and, and some of them, they, they talked about these filthy dreamers is, is one of the terms that's used, and then they talk about false dreamers and, and all those kind of things. So not every dream from God, and not every dream from, 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 from the devil. Some of them just has Hershey bars in them. And, and so a so long time ago, I'm, I'm a little fat kid living in, in a house that Dad was still building. How many of y'all ever moved into a house that wasn't finished? And so Dad is the house that we live in now. I'm about 9, 10, 11 years old, somewhere along in that line. And we had just put down the hardwood floor in my bedroom. It's not this fancy pre-finished stuff that you can get today that's already ready to go and nice and shiny and smooth and glossy. It was unfinished hardwood floor. And so, you know, on this little narrow two-inch boards and they're put together and they got little ripples across them and they got sharp edges across them like that. But we got the hardwood floor and we'll get it, you know, we'll get it sanded down before too long one of these days. And so it is, how many of y'all remember the first dream you ever had? I don't know that this is the first dream I ever had, but it's the first dream I ever remember having. And it stayed with me. Again, Hershey bar. You guys don't underestimate the power of a Hershey bar. I, I preached this in early service, and Carla Ward came up to me, and, and listen, listen to the power of this right here. She said when she was sick with her first child, the morning sickness and all that, Kayla, for nine months, the only thing she could live on and hold down was a Hershey bar. Folks, that's power right there. Don't you dispute the power of a... All right, we're not going to argue the healing properties of Hershey's chocolate just yet. But there is a great power and a draw. In, 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 in. So this little fat kid is, you ever been in that between state when you knew you were dreaming, you knew you were asleep, but you also were aware that there were things around you that were real. Anybody ever been in that no-no land right there? And so that's kind of where I was at in this. It was hot summertime. The reason I remember this, we had no air conditioning and had a big box fan. How many of y'all remember the box fans? Now remember, back in the day, the box fans didn't have plastic covers on them. They had metal covers on them. How many of y'all remember that, right? It's serious. They, they made out of steel, you know, man's fan right there. So <laughs> windows open. My bedroom was on the south side of the house, so I'm getting a south breeze out of the summertime. It is about 110 breeze, but it was still a breeze, right? <laughs> Green bugs stuck all over the screen. Thank God for a screen in the, right? I mean, oh no, okay. All right, country folks, here we amen. And, 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 and so I'm in that tween land, and it was like the bigger version, and it was floating out there. And I knew I was asleep, and I knew I was in bed, and I thought, now listen, you may not look like it, but I have some jungle cat reflexes in this life right here. Kind of the spirit of the puma gets on me once in a while. And this thing is floating out there. And I reached for it in my dream, knowing I'm in bed, feeling the fan blowing on me. And this thing's slow. I picked right up on that in the dream because it just floated away. But it was faster than me. And so in the dream, I'm thinking, I have got this thing figured out. That candy bar can't float as fast as I can jump. <laughs> Look over at your neighbor and tell them, never jump out of bed nose first. <laughs> this is a true story. Now, you may be suspect about the rest of the dreams we talk about, but this is the true story. First dream I ever remember right here. And so... This thing floating out there, and I'm thinking, if I jump fast, I can get it because it's slow. And I literally jumped out of bed. Of course, the candy bar. How many of y'all know there's a difference in a dream from God and a hallucination? Amen. <laughs> all right, you got it. The candy bar disappeared, and all of a sudden, I feel my nose raking across that hardwood floor. I literally, no, oh, you guys are laughing at my pain, you bunch of sickos. It hurt me. I skinned my nose from about the middle. I mean, I'm talking, I dug it in all the way to right here and peeled my nose. I wasn't done yet. Remember me mentioning the fan? Yeah. 
I stuck my head. Thank God it wasn't plastic or I'd have got a haircut. I did get a concussion from the metal grate, though. I stuck my head. Run the fan, man. It's just, you know, grinding because I bent the metal plate. Now listen to me. We're not chasing after illusions. We're not chasing after illusions. When God speaks to us through dreams and visions and revelations, they don't float away. You can grasp them. Everybody look over your name and tell them you can get it. You can get it. God trying to show us something. God trying to reveal things to us. God's the greatest communicator. And so a lot of the time we relegate dreams and visions and stuff to the old prophets. Did you know this about your New Testament? That in the first two chapters of Matthew... We're getting ready to go into the Christmas season and in the first two chapters of the book of Matthew, five dreams. Five dreams in the first two chapters and we could talk about Peter, we could talk about Ananias, we could talk about Paul, we can talk about the whole book of Revelation and that's in the New Testament. Look over to your them. It's real and for now. Now young people, I'm going to talk to you teenagers for just a moment that's in here and it's not just for the old people. Right? Joseph, 17, and he has, a, he has multiple dreams that will steer him throughout the course of his life. How many of y'all believe this, that God has seen your tomorrow? Okay, now I want you just, now listen to me. If you believe that, I believe that God has seen the end from the beginning. If God, now listen to me, if God has seen my tomorrow... He has seen the answer I need today. He has seen the miracle. He's seen the healing. He's seen the breakthrough that I need now. If He's seen my tomorrow. But the problem is, I can't see it. Unless, now listen to me. I can't see it unless He shows me. And listen, now listen, I'm not done. I can't see it unless He shows me. And He can't show me if I won't see it. Huh? I suspect that some of the reason I've gone through some of the things that I have gone through is because I didn't pay attention to some of the things that God was using to speak to me and I just buzzed right on by them. We have become familiar with dreams. We don't understand dreams. We haven't been taught dreams and visions from a spiritual standpoint, but yet we have them. I believe that God made us that way so when we finally lay down at night and get quiet, maybe then He can talk to us. Huh? Dreams and visions and revelations. So we've been talking about this passage of Scripture in this series. John 16, 13, it's up on your screen for you right there. How be it when He, the Spirit of Truth, everybody say the Spirit of Truth. When He is come, right, He will guide you into all truth. Everybody say all truth. He won't speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. And here's the line we're going to look at today. And He will show you things to come. Everybody say He'll show me. See, I believe He's seen my tomorrow. He's seen the answer that I have need of. He's seen... I was sharing in early service, our two grandchildren, uh, the, the two young ones, was, was here with us uh, in this. And, and, and so right after our daughter Mandy had had an accident uh, back in 07, uh, there was a lot of uh, discouragement uh, that she would never be able to have children. She would never be, they didn't have any children at that time. And so Marsha and I was, was praying and some things like that. And Marsha has this dream. And in this dream that she has, she sees a little blonde-headed girl who's full of fire and sass. <laughs> we call her Bella now. <laughs> now we're praying. See, we're in a situation at the time when God speaks a word to you, whether it's through a burning bush. Listen, His sheep know His voice. It's not just about shepherds or pastors or prophets or apostles or evangelists or teachers. It's for His sheep. His sheep know His voice. And God has a way to speak to us. He's the greatest communicator that's ever been. So whether it's a bush, a star, an angel, right? All of the, a donkey, right? We've talked about all of those different things. Whether it's through His Word. And again, we remind you that the Spirit of God won't speak to you anything that contradicts the Word of God. So you always come back. You measure it 
In interpretation dreams, I won't have time to teach on this today, but in interpretation dreams, you use the Word of God first. For instance, here's an example. If you see a snake in a dream, what's the first thing that you would think of if you see a snake? Something evil, something bad, right? Flashback to the garden, probably the devil or the demon or something evil, right? So you use Scripture to interpret at that first level. And again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in, in, in teaching on the interpretation of it to be able to discern those things. I need to be able to see the things to come. If I can see those things to come, if I can, if I can have a revelation of what's out there, and God wants me to because in Acts chapter 2, we'll read it in a moment, He promises that in the outpouring of the last days that we would see visions and dreams. It's part of the New Testament promise of the latter days outpouring. But yet we're never taught on it. I think the reason a lot of people miss the things that God speaks to them is because we've never been taught on it. We've kind of dismissed it because, well, that's kind of, you know, it's a little bit, uh, you know. Listen, the Scripture teaches us a lot about dreams and visions and revelation. We're just going to, I just want to introduce it to you, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to start paying attention. And not every dream, now listen, not every dream is, is, is a, a spiritual dream. But when God shows you things, how, how many guys can remember back in the day when I was a kid growing up as well, uh, in the little country churches that we attended when I was a kid, we've got a little bitty small stage, and every Christmas we had some old curtains. Anybody remember the old curtains? And then we're getting ready to do a Christmas play, and it's always a big deal, and there's going to be a big production, and we've got one here this year, right, on the 19th. Everybody say the 19th. We're going to have a Christmas program. Miss Dee Dee's putting it together, and it's about the cry and the light and the gift. That's the name. The cry the light, and the gift. And it'll be on both services on the 19th. And uh, did you know that between uh, the end of the Old Testament and the birth of Jesus Christ that there was 400 years of silence? 400 years of silence. And that silence was broken by the cry of a baby. <laughs> by the cry of a baby. And the light was born into the world. See, it wasn't just any cry of any baby. But it was a fulfillment of prophecy and light would come into the dark world. Hmm? And that light would shine into the darkness. And the darkness, and remember what we talked about last week, darkness is not an affirmative power or force. It is a passive force. And it can only occupy the places where light has left void. When we evict light, listen to me, when we evict light out of our government, darkness is going to take its place. When, and it's easy for us to talk about all those things, right? When we evict light out of our judicial branches, then darkness is the only thing. I have a greater problem whenever we evict light out of our churches. Hmm? I shared that statistic with you last year, 300, or last year, last week. 320,000 churches roughly in the United States of America. 220,000 of them are compromising churches. They are left-leaning in a liberal um, humanistic philosophy and theology. And so when light is evicted, darkness comes in and occupies that void. And so there's a ton of things that we can look at that, that, that when, darkness, when darkness moves in, um, the results and the consequences of that darkness. But what if we could see things to come? What if we, we could do like Jeremiah said, so we'll, we'll use confirmation here. In Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me and I will answer you. Everybody say, He will answer. <laughs> I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And he said, well, I don't really believe that. Well, listen, you don't have to. You can, you can live in the dark. You can follow. You don't have to. You, you, you can guess your way through, and I hope you guess right. Those old programs, those old plays that we would watch. Now, here's, here's what I knew about those. Behind the curtain, there's a stage, but I couldn't see what was set on the stage. Marsha and I like to go to Christmas programs and plays, and we like to go uh, stained glass theater. How many of y'all ever been to stained glass theater over by Ozark? Put on some wonderful Christian programs and some things like that. And the curtain comes open. Everybody say revelation. The word, one of, one of the translations of that word revelation literally means to draw back or to lift up, to pull back the curtain. Now listen, the stage was already set, 
God has already seen my tomorrow. God's already seen your tomorrow. The stage is set for your life. He has a plan for your life. The answer's there. The miracle's there. The healing's there. The breakthrough's there. The information and the direction you may need is there. But you won't be able to walk in it until you can see it. And you can't see it until the curtain's drawn back. Make sense? Sure it does. And so God, we need to see however you choose to show us. Today I'm just going to talk about dreams and visions primarily and God opening those areas up in our life. Where we say, well, God, don't ever use me in that way. Do you have dreams? If you have dreams, be sure that you're not just dismissing because you haven't been taught, you haven't been looking, or you haven't been listening. God might be. Hmm? Now, I'm not talking about your Hershey bar dreams. Now this is what I'm this is what I'm confident of, and I want you to I want you to hear this. And I've already spoken this. When we get ready to pray in just a little bit, we're going to pray for God to draw back the curtain. And some of you will see, either through dream or vision, either today, tonight, or in the next in, the, in a short period of time, and I believe this with everything that's in me, some of you are going to see the answer that you're in need of. You're going to get the direction that you're in need of, that leading. He will guide you, right? That's what guides do. He will lead you. He will guide you. The healing. And, and what happens in these things, listen, when, when we have dreams and visions and revelation, uh, God gives us peace in these. Right, we got this line written down. This is, this is where this was born from. God gives us peace through these storms so Satan can't steal our victory. Now listen, when I'm at peace with God, I can hear God, and when I can hear God, I can win. Hmm? And so whenever we... Listen, whenever we're praying for Mandy... To be able to have children, we're interesting. We want Brad and Mandy to be able to have kids, and we want to be grandparents. And Marcia sees a little blonde headed, feisty girl, and Grayson was born. <laughs> Not a blonde headed, feisty little girl. He's all boy, but. And so we said, well, boy, we missed that one. We must have believed that. But that's not the route we went. She knew what she'd seen. We were in agreement on what she'd seen. And so we're just thinking, awesome, God ain't done yet. Right. Hmm? Right. Truth. And the little girl's downstairs right now. She was sitting right here with Grandpa and Grandma. And I can't tell you, I have a folder at home that's thick. And for 40 years in ministry, God's been showing me things and dreams and and listen to me. It makes no difference to me whether you believe that or not. I believe it. Yes. And some of the, the very building you're setting in is designed out of uh, some dreams and some things. Is that right, Tiny? Me and this guy right here, by the Lord's help. And that, was, that, that is where and we sat down and we prayed over and went, huh? The property that you're setting on and God's showing us and leading us and bringing some things together and we knew how to stand. We saw behind the curtain only because God would show us. I can't see if God don't show me, but God can't show me if I refuse to see. Hmm? You're not going to see if you don't look for her. Huh? Now, uh, you'll show us things to come. I want to look at another passage of Scripture. And uh, let's go to Job 32 and 8. We go all the way back into Job. And, and so we've been made in the image of God. Remember the glove thing that I showed you? The, the glove is made in the image of my hand. But it, is, it, it hasn't taken life or form until that image is filled. So, it's, so it was the same with Adam when God formed him from the dust of the ground. Adam is made in the image of God, but until God breathed the breath of life. Everybody say, the breath of life. He was just an empty form. He's hollow. There's no life inside. He's just been formed out of dust. But God breathed the breath of life, right, into him. And man became a living soul. Job, the oldest book in Scripture... Job teaches us here, and there's several great revelations about dreams and seeing things in the night seasons and stuff in various different chapters in, in Job 4, 33, some other places we won't talk about them this morning, but this one I want to show to you. But there is a spirit in man. 
How many of y'all believe that you have a spirit? Spirit, soul, and body, huh? There's a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. How can I understand the things of the Spirit unless God shows it to me? And, and what part of me receives that understanding? How, how can I get hold of that understanding unless God shows it to me? And so you are designed a spirit being that can receive a message from the Spirit. You say, oh, you're getting flaky. You're getting weak. You study it. And, and listen, and, and you can't walk this on my faith. I've seen too many things. I've watched too many years. I've watched too many things confirmed just time after time after time. And I'm not talking about illusions and hallucinations of, hand, of candy bars. I'm talking about things that we've got a hold of and that we're walking in today and enjoying today and saying, God has seen my tomorrows. And He can show us if we'll look, if we'll seek. What did He say? Knock and it be open. Ask and what? Yeah. And seek and what's, and you'll find. Amen. All right. One of the problems, and we're going we're gonna, to uh, we're gonna address a couple of questions right here. Why don't people hear from God? And I touched on that one last week. Why don't people hear from God? And we talked about last week they don't want to because I already know what God's going to tell me, so I don't want Him to tell me because it's not what I want. Don't tell me to forgive that bunch because I don't want to forgive them, so I'm not going to talk to you, God. The other one, and I use this one in an acronym when I teach this, is DEAD, and it stands for Distracted, Exhausted, Anesthetized, and Defeated. That's a whole big mouthful right there, but something, how many of y'all ever get distracted and, and, and you couldn't hear from God? You just got too much stuff going on. Anybody say that anymore? Oh, I've just got so much going on. I didn't have time. I wish I, I need to be in the Word more. I, I need to be in prayer more. Listen, the whole point of this thing right here is, listen, until you, until you will discipline yourself to the point where you'll get time in the presence of God. Hmm? And, that, and that's part of the Christian disciplines. Now, I'm not trying to be ugly or condemning in that. And I know that we've got all kinds of things. And I believe that that's one of the reasons that God, because we are so distracted by everything that's going on, I believe that God uses that sleep time because at least we finally get quiet. And God, because, listen, and God, because we are spirit beings, can speak into our spirit when we're asleep in the natural. The natural's not getting in the way of the spiritual. Make sense? It does to me. And, and so, exhaustion. Anybody just tired? Man, we go and we go, and that's sometimes a result of that distraction and stuff. We've been going and going and going. I've got all the time. And God, I, and, and what happens? And I want you to listen to this line right here. If you don't or won't hear from God and do, how many of y'all know it's not just enough to be hearers of the word, but we have to be doers of the word? Amen. Not just hearers of the Word. And so, why don't we hear from God? Well, because we don't want to, because we're dead. We, we don't discern sometimes when we do hear. We're just deaf and blind spiritually to those things sometimes. If you won't hear and do, at some point, now listen to me, your circumstances will become desperate. And desperate people, now listen, are vulnerable. Hmm? Desperate people are vulnerable. You ever seen anyone drowning? It's a scary, stinking thing. Desperate people are vulnerable. They'll believe, they'll listen to, and they'll take hold of anything they keep that they think will keep them from drowning. Hmm? I'm looking for an answer. I'm dealing with this pain. I'm dealing with this question. I, I, I need, I need... And we focus so much on the need and we don't focus on the one who can meet the need. God, let us see behind the curtain because you've seen my tomorrow. Part of the time, one of the other lines that I'm confident that the Lord spoke to me concerning this morning, and I just wanted to make sure that you're fighting the battle that's in front of you and not the battles that are behind you. Hmm? Make sure that you're fighting the battles that are in front of you. A lot of people get locked up in the past. And how are you going to see anything that's about to come if all you're fighting is that which is already past? Uh, he'll show you things to come. 
Now, he can reveal things about your past and all that. I'm not saying that. But a lot of the time we get so entrenched in the unforgivenesses and the bitterness and we get to dealing with the shames and the blames and all of those things, the brokenness of the past. And we can't see what God has for us and so we stay hooked up in that old cycle. And that's a word for some or maybe several, those that are watching even. God has a miracle. God has a healing. God has a breakthrough. God has an answer. God has direction for you. The stage is set, but it's on the other side of the curtain. I have to be able to see with the eyes of the Spirit and hear with the ears of the Spirit. Now, I'm not trying to over-spiritualize things. I want us to see things as God has intended them, that I can have the inspiration. Everybody say the inspiration of the Almighty. It is literally the God-breathed. That word inspiration can be translated the God-breathed revelation or divinely breathed revelation. My spirit man is hungry for communication from the Almighty. But I'm so focused on the things that are going on in the flesh, in the natural. If we walk in the flesh, what? If we walk in the Spirit, if we're led by the Spirit, right? That's Romans 8 and 1. It's life. Now then, um, let's go to uh, Ephesians 1.17. We were here last week. This is your promise. And we're going to give you a couple more passages and then we're going to close. I'm just, I, I want you to dig in to the things of, of, of God's Spirit. And I don't want you to dismiss your dreams. I don't want you to spiritualize every dream that comes along. Chances are, if it's a Hershey bar, might not be God. Especially if you stick your head through a box fan. <laughs> All right. Uh, why don't those who do hear from God, why don't we do what He says? I heard from God but I didn't do what he said. Sometimes it's just out and out self-willed disobedience. And I'm not going to give you some long stuff on this one right here. Sometimes I don't understand. I, I, I can't get clarity. I, I can't properly discern or have the interpretation or the application. Let me tell you what. When interpretation and application work together. And when I have proper clarity, the interpretation, then I can have proper application... And the application, listen to me, the application of the... God's not showing you a dream or a vision, giving you a revelation just so you can walk around. Listen, I've been hearing from God. You ought to think I'm something. God's giving you this for a reason. And there'll be proper spiritual application that needs to be applied in this. And this is what happens. Application is where the Spirit and the Word and the natural world connect or even sometimes collide. They connect at this point. It is the works of faith to run with what God has revealed. And inside this application there will be strategy, tactics, timing, direction, and purpose. And because you know Scripture, it will be in alignment with Scripture. So it will be scriptural, it will be clear, it will be credible, and it will be accurate. Judges get lied to, police officers get lied to, and pastors get lied to continuously. And I can have sometimes someone sitting across the desk from me, and they're telling me this story, and my eyes and my ears in the natural are saying, hmm, you know, not going, but my spirit man on the inside is saying, that ain't right. <laughs> After enough years of learning that voice. And listen, and that's all I'm encouraging. Learn in. Lean in to the things of the Spirit. I have come to a point where I trust the things of the Spirit that God reveals to me more than I trust my eyes and my ears. Hmm? And you say, oh boy, I didn't know I was going to church with a flake. Well, now you do. All right, so at least by the word. See, the things of God are spiritually discerned. And if you're having a struggle getting them, then you need to open up and spend some more time in the spiritual things to be able to open that receiver. You have that receiver. It's just learning to be keenly aware. You can't be passive. You can't be blasé about this. You have to be keenly aware of the presence of God and the Spirit of God. I don't want God to have to hit me in the head with a sledgehammer and, hey, say, wake up. Right? Lead us, Lord God, with that still, small voice. Show us, Lord God. 
Ephesians 1.17. This is Paul's prayer. We talked about it last week. I'm just going to hit it again, and then we're going to read another passage, and we're closed. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul is praying for believers at Ephesus, and this is his prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Everybody say the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Hmm? How many of y'all want what God paid for through Christ Jesus? Huh? How many of y'all want what God has for you? I do. And so, God, I want this spirit of wisdom and revelation. How many of y'all think our world needs some wisdom today? Some godly spiritual wisdom, huh? I'm not trying to be ugly or not trying... Again, doesn't matter what the area is, if we evict the light, then the darkness will just come. Hmm? And so we want to be very intentional. And we want to look for and embrace. How does God communicate? A lot of ways. The Word of God. You start there. You always start with the written Scripture. And then He communicates through pastors, teachers, apostles, prophets. Right? All of those five-fold ministry giftings that go on right there that Ephesians also teaches. But He has given you... We won't have time. This is your homework assignment for this week. I want you to study 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. That sounds good. That's actually the whole chapter. That's your chapter assignment for the week. And it talks about that we have this Spirit inside us, and God's Spirit not just with us, but in us and upon us. Pastor Scott mentioned that during worship, right? What would the Spirit of God working inside you be doing? Could the Spirit of God be stirring things inside your spirit while you're asleep? Or a vision while you're actually awake, but you see a, right? And again, and I can take you through the New Testament and I can teach you story after story, line upon line, of all these things that occurred in your New Testament. If you're reading the same Bible I'm reading, it's there. Okay? Now, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and it's in this specific area, in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. God, we want to know. Because on the side, on the other side of that curtain, the stage is set. And I need to know. You can show me things to come. I'm not going to keep fighting all these battles of the past. I've got to fight what's in front of me. Because I'm not going back. Anybody going back? I'm going forward. Amen. All right. Let's get in this last segment. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now, I'm not going to read it, but you can look in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Here's the promise of the last days outpouring. In the last days, I'll pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, right? And I'll pour out of my Spirit in those days. And your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Right? That's Acts chapter 2, verse 17. You can check me on it. It's there. And so, part of the last day's outpouring promise. How many of y'all believe that we need an outpouring of the Spirit of God in the days we're living in? Absolutely we do. So why would we not embrace what He said would happen? Prophecy, dreams, and visions. Specifically, He identifies those will be some of the earmarks of the last day's outpouring. And we're just going on, caught up with life, distracted. Huh? Just, just defeated, messed, anesthetized. Let me, let, me, let me talk about that word when I talk about why we don't hear sometimes being anesthetized. Anesthetized means we've become so comfortable with the, the conditions of the environment around us, it's almost like we've become numb to the stuff. I'll give you one that just chaps me and it has forever, and I have not become anesthetized to it. It's still raw, it still hurts, because we are about family. God is about family, and I despise abortion. I don't despise people that have had those. Now listen, don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but I think abortion is an ungodly thing by which light has been evicted and darkness come in. It's either of the law of the spirit of life, or it's the law of sin and death. Which one does that? Seventy million children later. That's where we're at. And, and this isn't a popular thing. If I was wanting to compromise like those other 220,000 churches, I wouldn't talk about this subject or we'd talk about it from a different thing. Listen, 
The Scripture is very plain on the shedding of innocent blood. The Scripture is very plain about life is a gift from God. And I believe that equality begins in the womb. Now that may go against your politics and all that, and I'm, I'm not going to apologize. It is a scriptural thing. I love you and I'm not mad at you. And I can't tell you how many... I can't tell you how many moms and dads Marsha and I have prayed with and ministered to through through all of these years that have suffered the hurt and the pains of a bad decision that was encouraged. Listen, here's the here's the and that and that's horrible. As Americans, do you know that one point seven the the biggest abortion provider in the United States of America gets one point seven million dollars a day? You heard me right, one point seven million dollars a day from the government. I am not anesthetized to that. I haven't gotten over it. Hmm? I don't want my government subsidizing the spirit of death. And I ain't mad at no one. You can get mad with me. I've had people mad with me. Listen, I've been cussed and called everything you can imagine under the sun. Water off a duck's back, baby, so send your mail on. <laughs> huh? I want you to look at this because we're going to we're going to Christmas time. The birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Here's dream one. When Mother Mary, huh? When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in what? A dream. Everybody say dream one. So prior to this, we've gone through 16 verses. 17 is a segue verse. And 18, we've gone through 16 verses of begats. Right? How many of y'all remember how Matthew begins, right? And such and such begat and such and such. And it's important because we learn the lineage of Christ. And it's important. I'm not diminishing that. But it's like, all right, man, let's get on to the real good stuff. You know the first good stuff? It's a dream. It's a dream. And this is the essence of the dream. Joseph, God's doing a divine thing here, and you need to receive in your spirit the inspiration of this thing that God's doing in your spirit. The Almighty is going to and is speaking to you in a dream. And He says, don't you be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Everybody look over at your neighbor and tell him, He told him to marry Mary. Right? <laughs> He told him to marry Mary. That's what he did. You see, the dream came with some very specifics. It includes tactics. It includes timing. It in, it's detailed. Listen, in your dreams, when God begins to show you things, details matter. Details matter. He goes on and... Verse 20, I want to drop, uh, we get it. But while he thought on these things, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, take unto thee Mary for thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. How many of y'all know that had to be comforting for him to find out that, he's, that, he's, that his fiance hadn't been cheating on him? Just from a man thing. Listen, just the practical side of the man thing. Oh, God's doing something. And then I think that there comes a realization, oh, God's doing something in our family. God chose us. There are times, listen, there are times I wonder what God was thinking when He put me on the team. Anybody ever thought that about yourself? Huh? I don't understand, God, why you would even let me on the team. Why did you give me a jersey? When we were kids, we would, how many of y'all ever play games, you know, choose up teams, right? And we're going to play football, we're going to play soccer or something like that. And, and you'd choose up teams and the, the, the captains, right? Got two captains, well, I choose this one, well, I choose this one. And you're always trying to match up the strongest players, right? How many of y'all ever felt like you needed to be at the very end of the bunch when God was choosing, huh? 
But God chose you for this. Listen to me. God chose you. You are the light of the world. You're a light. You're the salt. And the world needs you, Christian. That's the hope. That's the plan of God. Now then, this virgin is going to conceive, bring forth a child. Listen to the detail. A son. Call his name Emmanuel. This is the interpretation of it. Verse 23. And... Uh, Dream one, you take care of business. I've chosen you. I've chosen this time, and uh, you and Mary. Let's go to dream two, three, and four real quickly. Verse 12, Matthew 2. Verse 12, Matthew 2. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Everybody remember the story? Three wise men. Everybody say they were wise. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation. See, these guys are they they ha they have to be important men because they have they have audience with Herod, the big guy. And what they literally did, being warned of God in what a dream, dream two, being warned of God, they literally, deliberately, and intentionally disobeyed the command of the ruler. Anybody pick up on anything like that? Maybe for today. If I know for sure, how much confidence can you have in your dream though? How, have you ever known something that you know, that I know, that I know, and this is the absolute way it is? We need to be that solid concerning the revelation of God to us in that right there. I am so convinced of this, I'm going to defy. Herod said, listen, I know you guys have followed this star to this point. So when you find this boy, you report back to me. Come back to me. Tell me where he is, this lying, slithering snake. He says, come back and tell me where he is so I can go worship him. He wasn't going to worship him. He's going to kill him. Isn't that right? That's the story. You've read it. That's the Christmas story. That's how the New Testament starts with five dreams. This is dream two. And in this dream, they were warned and absolutely defied the ultimate authority of the land, and they went their own way and followed God. You have to make a decision. And I'm not trying to get into your politics or anything like that, but I can tell you where I'm at. If I have to choose between God's Word and the world's Word, I'll choose God, and it doesn't make me any difference what ruler it offends. You better grow a spine, gang. You better get solid in the Word of God, and if there was ever a time that we needed as believers to hear from God, it is this time. Aaron, if you come, please. Verse 13, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. Here's dream three. He appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee. Now listen to me. Sometimes you think you're standing in faith when you think you're going to have to fight this. There are sometimes God will tell you to go the other way and run. He says, flee youthful lust. He tells Joseph, you don't stand right now and defy Herod. They defied Herod and they went. You go to Egypt. Sometimes you've been beat up or you've been almost defeated because you chose to fight where God didn't call you to fight. But you think it wasn't faith and boy... This super faith message and all of that whole kind of thing there. You need to learn how to discern and hear from God. And when you fight, you need to stand and fight on the ground that God gives you to fight on, not because in your own pride or your own spiritual arrogance you think that I'm going to fight every time. There are times when you just go on down to Egypt and you trust the results to God. You won't be there forever. God's got a plan. Hmm? You flee to Egypt. Who wants to be the guy who says, listen, honey, you're going to have to pack the bags. I know you just had a baby. Probably ain't going to be the greatest ride you ever had, but we've got to go south. We're headed to Egypt. Just following what the old Lord's... Okay, hon. That's what the Lord's speaking to you. I trust you. Hey, husbands and wives, can you trust one another in that kind of a communication? Hmm? Can you come together? Because two are better than one. Hmm? Don't just blow your dreams off. And again, I'm not telling you every dream you have spiritual. It might have something to do with pizza, hot peppers, and onion. It may be backing up on you. All right? Okay. They arose, took the young child and his mother by night, and they departed to Egypt. Verse 15. 
And was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. Now look, God's speaking a word. God's speaking a word to them that actually becomes fulfillment of prophecy. Spoken of the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. When Herod, and then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked, wise man, he was exceeding wroth, and he sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. See, hell's got a plan too. And it's not the first time that innocent blood's been shed. And you want to talk about late term. Two years old and under. Man ain't come up with nothing new on this kind of stuff. According to the time, he diligently inquired of the wise man. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying in Ramah was heard a voice. Lamentation, weeping, great mourning. It was Rachel, right? One of the mothers of Israel, mourning for her children. And she would not be comforted because they are not. What a sad thing. When we hear that word abortion, we hear about another child die, we should mourn. But we've become anesthetized to it. I don't want it to ever quit hurting me. Not until it's gone. Not until it's done. Our babies are precious. Our babies are precious. And sometimes they sure enough don't get here in the best of ways and circumstances and I get all of that. We got one that's adopted. He's precious, Pauline. We tell the other two, God showed us about you guys, but we chose this one. (laughs) You stand. Now they're getting ready to go back home. Verse 19, when Herod was dead, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream. Everybody say number four. Right? In a dream. Appears to Joseph. Take the young child and his mother and go back to the land of Israel. For they that are dead, which sought the young child's life, they're, they're dead, they're gone. You can go back home. Honey, pack the bags, we're going back. He arose and he took the young child and his mother, verse 21, and came into the land of Israel. Verse 22, but things change. We're not going back to Jerusalem. We're not going back to Bethlehem. We're not going back. We're going to a new town. Verse 22, but when he had heard, Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod. He was afraid to go, notwithstanding, listen to this, being warned of God in a dream. Being warned of God in a dream. He turned aside into parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. A Nazarene. Amen that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets he shall be called a Nazarene so we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas church and I want you to understand that dreams and visions and revelation are important so don't blow yours off don't don't hype them don't over hype them but discern and if you'll start seeking God will meet you and you'll be able to learn this whole section of this thing right here five years ago I taught an entire series I preached a series on Sunday morning and we taught on Wednesday night and that whole thing is those sermons and that right there I've spent literally a lifetime not chasing Hershey bars but things I could get a hold of that was real and God's warned us before we started in the battle with Bree and this whole leukemia thing trying to take our life didn't know exactly what it was but we were warned and we started praying against whatever was about to attack her because I knew she was about to come under attack and we told you kids that didn't we but God's good see so pull back the curtain and he'll let you see the stage he knows my tomorrow 
He knows the answer I need. He knows the healing I need. He knows the miracle I need. He's all, it's there. The stage is set. My breakthrough, the warning is there. I can't see it, God. If you won't show it to me, well, you said you'd show me things to come. You can't show it to me if I won't look. Look over at your neighbor and tell him, we need to look so we can see. We need to look so we can see. <clears throat> Heads bowed and let's just begin to pray. We're done right here. Our whole New Testament, this new covenant, this season of Christmas that we're about to enter into. Five powerful dreams. The interpretations, the applications, the revelation that come from them begins our New Testament and everything that we hold dear. It was just the first leg of the journey of the New Testament. 400 years, there had been no open vision. And that silence was broken by a baby's cry. Born in a manger in a little town called Bethlehem. God, we need to hear the cries of our babies in America. I don't want to just talk about those things. We want to pray. We want to intercede. We pray for our leaders. We pray for America. We pray, by, Lord God, you would pull back the curtain for each individual here today and each one that's watching. We pray, Lord God, that you would show us things to come. God of mercy. God of love. You make all things new. You give us a new start. You give us new beginnings. You answer. You break through. So anybody hear the the sound of my voice right now so listen you know I've been fighting the things that's behind and I, I need to focus quit focusing on those and I need to fight the battles that's in front of me I need to just move on anybody did that did that coincide with somebody's spirit that's here today can I see hand uh, right I need to fight right right yeah 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 it's a word for you listen God reaching out to you with a revelation with a word there's no way I could know that unless God had spoken it to me so you receive that by the spirit of God Dwells in me, dwells in you. Now the next call is this one right here. Who, who, who says, listen, I need to see behind the curtain. I, I need an answer. I, I need direction. Right? And I know that this is vague. I know that this is an umbrella cast. But it's important that you recognize it. So listen, I'm going to look behind the veil. Because I'm going to pray for God to show it to you and reveal it to you. I need an answer. I need direction. I need a healing. I, I need a miracle. I need a breakthrough. God, could you show me that so that I can believe for that? Let me see your hand. Yeah. Let me see your hand. Come on. Come on. Don't hold back. Say, yeah. Now, if you want to come up and pray, we'll pray with you. The altars are open and, and we'll have folks pray with you. For those that are watching, we want you to know that we're praying for you as well. Let's pray over those. Father God, for those who are, they've been distracted and fighting the battle that's behind, Lord God, I pray that they could accurately understand and see and discern clearly, Lord God, the battle that's in front of them and realize that the enemy's just been trying to pull. Listen, you're showing us things to come and not dragging us. We're not going to live in the past, Lord God. We're going on and we're going to live in the future, Lord God. We're going to live in the now. We're going to live in where you are taking us in the things to come. You have a plan for us. And you've seen that. I, I haven't seen it. I, I can tell you about the next hour unless you show it to me. But I could never see it if I'm not looking for it. Father God, we look for the things that you would speak to us. I pray, Lord God, over those who need the answer, who need the direction, who needs your Spirit to lead them, to guide them, that Spirit of truth leading them into all truth, Lord God. 
I pray, Father God, through dream, through vision, through prophecy, or through revelation of some type, Lord God, in the next few hours, the next few days, Lord God, that they'll receive something and the report will be, Pastor God showed me. I pray, Lord God, for healings and for miracles. And I pray for breakthroughs. I want to speak a special word to that one. There are several that need that breakthrough. Pastor Scott alluded to it as well. Those dead bones, those dry bones. Maybe it's in relationship, maybe it's in finance. Those were the words he said. My spirit bears witness with that. That is from the Spirit of God. And we speak to those breakthroughs. We all can agree in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. I love you. Be blessed. Merry Christmas. The Chosen movie on the 13th. Right? The cry, the light, and the gift on the 19th. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Now, I can't normally be trusted with this many Hershey bars. So, if you want a Hershey bar, come get some love. I love you all. Thank you. Be blessed as you go. There's plenty up here to share. Come get you some.